Hello, how's everybody doing? This is Mickey. Well, it's been quite the week for Lightroom. Started out the week with a Lightroom Summit put on by Dave Cross and 15 of some of the better Lightroom instructors I've seen in a long time. It was a really, really good summit. And then in the middle of that week, Adobe decided it was going to upgrade Lightroom. And it upgraded to version 13.3. And in that upgrade, it gave us several new features, one of which is the generative removal tool. And that's the one I want to cover today. Uh, if you haven't upgraded, you'll have to upgrade to see this new tool, upgrade to version 13.3. And just a heads up, it does require a catalog uh, rebuild. So it will be asking you to uh, generate a new catalog. You can name it whatever you want. You don't have to worry. It doesn't update your catalog and erase it. It creates a new copy of your catalog, and that's the catalog you'll be working from. So if something happens in the upgrade, at least you have your original catalog and all your information in there. To start out with, to see this new tool, we're going to go to the develop module and we're going to look at the very top row of our icons and you can see we don't have that little band-aid icon anymore. It's the eraser tool. And by clicking on this, we can see the new removal tool. And that's what it's called. It used to be called healing and now it's called remove. This also has a shortcut key of Q. So if you press the Q key, you can open up this, this new panel and see everything. Now, I'm going to start from the right to the left of these new icons, and we have our clone tool and our healing tool. There is absolutely no change to these tools. So if you're used to using these tools, they are still there for you, and there's no change, so they're very familiar. The last one is where the new magic happens, and this is our remove tool. So when we click on that tool, you will see that there have uh, new options of generative AI, object aware, where we can size our brush and opacity just like we could with the clone and the healing tool. And we still have our visualized spots. So by clicking the visualized spots and you have your slider to increase or decrease the, the uh, masking so you can see your spots. And the shortcut, shortcut for this remains the same. It's just the A key. The A key turns your visualized spots on and off. And also what's good about this tool that I know I use a lot to clean up my photographs is that it's available no matter what tool you're in, clone, healing, or the AI tool. Now, this talks specifically about the generative AI removal tool. It, you really, with this tool, have three options. One, without selecting any one of these. And when you do that, it's all local. So it's not going to the cloud to find new pixels or anything. It's going to use the pixels that you surround to remove an object. So that means that it's, it's local, it's a lot quicker, but it will not be near as accurate or effective as the generative and object aware. So let's just, let me just show you. We're gonna choose the uh, removal tool. We're gonna to size our brush to take this object out here and we're just gonna drag across just like we did before and it's gonna make the removal. And it's pretty good. This removal tool works really good on small objects. It's when you start looking at a big object that you, you might have a problem. So if we went over here we, like we wanted to get rid of this house and it, it kind of does an okay job, but actually the uh, generative AI will be a lot better. So I'll show you here in just a minute. Now also, I, I just want to remind everybody, when you're using this tool, um, and let's just clean it up, take it away, and bring it back. When you go ahead and swipe over, if it doesn't do a really good job, you can always, just like before, hold the command key down and you'll get this little crosshair and you can pick another sample area, drag across and create your sample area and you see it changes the sampling of the content aware area that you just did. And that's because, like I said, this is done with all local pixels. When we use generative AI removal with object aware, we're bringing in new pixels from the uh, AI engine that Adobe uses. So uh, in reminding you of that, you have to have an internet connection for this to work correctly. Now also I wanna show you this early access, which means that this feature is still kinda in beta. Uh, 
All right, so it might not do everything that Adobe hoped it would do when they made it available to you, but as part of the early access, you can leave comments to Adobe to help make this tool better. And all you have to do is click on early access and you can share your feedback on online forum with Adobe. And that's always a good thing to do because it lets you be involved in making the tool something better that you'll use in the future. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this remove generative AI tool. You can see we have two options here, generative AI and object aware. They're both gonna do the same thing, except generative AI, when we make this selection, we're gonna to have to define the area exactly that we want to have removed, where if we choose the object aware, Lightroom will help us define the area and fill in any blank spots around or in the object that we're trying to define. So let me zoom in a little bit here and kind of show you the difference. If we're using just the generative AI, we're going to draw around the area that we want to remove. And we have to be sure that we fill in all the areas around the outline. All right. When you do that, it's going to give you the mass that it's going to use. Now, a big hint here, when you do define the area, always leave some overlap so the AI engine knows what pixels to grab to help blend this the best it can. When you make your selection, it's going to bring up a mask refinement window. And I've had some people ask this, does this mean I want to add to my picture or do I want to subtract from my picture? It, this is actually adding and subtracting of the mask. So if I wanted to include more areas in the mask I def just defined, you would just like draw those areas in. I want to include, include these two in the mask to be uh, removed or subtract. So if I didn't want to include these, I can do that. And this is put in uh, based on the complaints <laughs> that Adobe got, because remember in the content aware tool, once you define your area, it immediately goes into the removal action. So if you didn't define or mask the area the way you wanted, you didn't have any chance. You, you'd have to back out completely and make a whole new mask. So this allows you to uh, modify that mask so that you can put in the areas that you want to choose. Now, once you have your mask defined, you're just going to hit apply. And it's going to use the removal generative AI and it's going to uh, generate a area with the object removed. Now, is as with the other uh, generative AI tools in Photoshop, it's going to give you three examples or variations. So this is variation number two, this is variation number three, and this is back to one. All right, and that's the one I like. Now you can regenerate more variations by hitting the refresh key. But in doing that, it's going to overwrite the first three and give you three separate ones. Where in Photoshop, it just keeps adding three, six, nine, twelve. Not so in Lightroom. You're only going to get one through three. So let's zoom back out. And we're going to undo that action so we have our uh, object back. And this time we're going to select Object Aware. Now with Object Aware, you all you have to do is outline the area. And we'll make a small brush on this so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to make just an area like this. And as you can see, it goes ahead and makes the best selection of the object that it thinks you want to use. And again, it brings you to the mask refinement so you can add a subtract from the mask and then you would hit apply. All right, so that's a good removal. You can choose one, two or three or refresh if you want something more. Now let me cover another real quick tip. Uh, once you define your area, some people don't like the mask refinement when it'll pop up. It's just a real simple object. I don't need to refine it anymore. I just want to go right to the removal. If you want to do that, we'll cancel out of this. Hold your command or control if you're on a PC. Hold that command key down and draw around your object. And when you release, it'll immediately go into the generative remove. So that's a way if you have a lot of small objects that you know it's going to do a good job. Uh, this will allow you to skip that mask refinement screen. Now, let me show you, uh, we tried to move this with a more content aware removal tool. Now we're gonna use the AI tool and we'll use object aware on this too. So we're just gonna draw roughly around the object. 
about like this. And because we have object aware chosen, it's going to fill it in. Now, it didn't get everything that we thought it should. So this is where we'd go to add. And we'll make our brush a little bigger. And we're going to add to the mask, just like this. So it didn't really go into the object selection uh, or removal until you know we complete our mask refinement brush. And so we've completed that. Let's hit apply. And let's see how that looks compared to what we saw when we used the content aware tool. So as you can see, that is infinitely better than what we got with the content aware tool. And just as an example, let's back out real quick. And we're going to go to the content aware tool, which would be without generative or object aware selected. And we'll go ahead and select it and we'll have to make the selection ourselves. So we have to make sure we get everything in here like this. And it automatically goes into uh, the removal because it's not uh, AI. So we don't get mask refinement. And as you can see, all we can do is refine and choose more but we don't have a way to use, look at three different types of um, actions or three types of variations. Now we could hold our option, I mean command key down and define another area. So let's just say we'll just define this area and we'll see what it does. Still not very good. So your best bet, you know, this is good for small objects, but for larger objects, we would want to use generative AI and probably with object aware. All right, now let's move to a new subject. So let's go to animals to see how it can deal with fur. So we're going to have our generative AI turned on. And I'm not going to use object aware. And I'm just going to define and try to get rid of this bridle. I'm going to take it a little piece at a time instead of all at once. Make sure I have a lot of fur around it so that it has something uh, to draw from as a sample. And I'm going to hit apply. So you can see it did pretty good. Let's look at uh, variation number two. That one looks a little better. I kind of like variation number three. So now let's refine the other areas. So I'm going to choose this area of the bridle across the, the nose. Give this uh, add. I'm going to put a little more on top here so it has more sampling area. And hit apply. Good. Not bad at all. Let's look at the variations. I kind of like number three best. And last is this little metal ring here. And I'm going to use that command key uh, option. So I don't want to go to uh, the masking refinement window. So I'm going to hold my command key and click. And it immediately goes into generation. And a good job at removing that last little bit. So it's not just... Uh, landscape or uh, snow or weather. It works real good on fur and kind of fluffy little animals. All right, let's look at a new picture. In this one, we want to select three separate areas that are not contiguous, which means they're not, they're not touching each other. So it will be three areas that we want to remove objects. What this tool does is allow us to independently go through the variations, even though the three objects are all uh, removed at the same time. So I'm going to have my generative AI on for removal. And I'm going to define the area that I want to remove. We'll have this object, then this object, and I'm going to take this little crummy little drip of something right here, this object. All right, we're going to hit apply, which is going to go ahead and remove from those three individual areas. The generative AI works best when it has less than 1024 pixels. Any more than that, then it won't have a very high resolution. So instead of trying to jam this all together with three as one removal object, it actually breaks them apart into three separate pins. And you can see now it's removed everything and it looks really good. But we would like to see the variations on each one of these. So we would click on the little icon. And then we have our variations here, one, two, and three. And I happen to like number one best. And we can go down to this one and one, two, or three. And then the next one, one, two, or three. And if for some reason you don't like the way that looks, you can always grab this pin and move it to a different area and it will go ahead and regenerate and give you another picture. And you can do that with each individual one and say, okay, I like that a little better. I look at one, two, and three. 
I kind of like two. And we're done. So this allows you to do multiple uh, areas on your photograph that are non are not contiguous, which means that they can then be made separate changes, but still all on one screen. So you can touch them one at a time and, and find the variations that you like. Really nice, nice addition to this smart tool. All right, the last thing I want to cover is kind of a gotcha, things you need to look out for when you use the removal tool when you're using other AI masking. All right, here we're looking at the outside of the clock tower that we were just seeing the inside of, and we have put a mask on here for the sky. So we can see that the sky is masked, but uh, we can run into problems when we try to do a removal in an area that is adjacent to or being covered by another mask, an AI mask specifically. So we're going to go to the removal tool and we're going to use generative AI. Let's zoom in so we can see this better. And what we want to do is I just want to take this top vein off. So all, it, all it, that the steeple ends or the clock tower ends is in a straight steeple more or less. All right, so we've defined the area that we want to remove and we're going to hit apply. And we'll, we'll take this one. But as you can see, if we zoom in, you can see that there is a kind of an outline of the uh, weather vane that was up there or the wind vane. And that is because, as you can see on our mask here, we have a red dot is because we haven't updated our AI masking. So when you, try to do a removal in an area that already has a mask defined to it, you have to go and you'll see the red dot. You go to the mask, click on the three dots and update AI masks. When you do that, it takes away that light shadow area that the AI mask was kind of hiding because you made these changes after you put the AI mask on. So it needs to have the AI mask update. And once you do that, then everything looks fine. But if you ever see any shadowing or anything, always check your masking, because uh, you'll see in your masking icon, you'll see a red dot, which means an AI mask is not in sync and you need to update it. And you'll do that by the three dots and update your AI mask. Well, I hope this uh, gave you a good bird's eye view of what this uh, removal AI tool can do in Lightroom. It's it's come a long, long way. And I'm sure it's in beta now and it's going to get better. But it just gives us more latitude to remove objects in Lightroom rather than having to jump into Photoshop and do the changes before jumping back into Lightroom. If anybody has any questions or any comments or even better ways to do this, please drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you. And I will talk to you all soon.